Science is not neutral. Science is not objective. Science is not free from the other sciences or the, 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 the other disciplines that in fact do come with a theory. Right? It's impossible to be completely neutral. Every interpretation of everything in the world is theory laden. It's impossible to be completely neutral and completely factual because there's no um, given facts that don't have an interpretive context or theory or system within which those facts exist. So if that's the case, and I think that it's pretty easy to demonstrate that philosophically, we can begin to see how science, and I'm not saying there is no science, there is science, but what popularly goes by the title of science for a long time is in fact another layer of propaganda. Again, I'm not, to, I'm not denying that there are many engineers, many scientists out there who do legit science, of course. But the notion prominent from the time of the Enlightenment on that you can be philosophically neutral and produce science or objective facts that don't fit into any interpretive matrix is completely impossible. There's no such thing as a brute fact. Anything that we interpret or understand in the world is part of a larger, larger paradigm or schema that we have for interpreting the world. It doesn't mean that we can't know anything or that nothing's true. It just means that that's how we're so constituted. That's just how we are. We interpret things within our worldview. And so therefore, with that in mind, we, begin, we, can, we, can, we can actually begin to see how it, it makes perfect sense that the birth of modern science actually comes out of these kinds of occult orders an occult, Rosicrucian, Freemasonic, Hermetic, and alchemical philosophies. Now, these philosophies are not so much prominent now because science has moved on and sort of morphed out of that older baggage, you could say. But what is still present is a lot of the same mythos. And I would argue that even perhaps at the highest levels of science, you have a form of Luciferianism, a form of um, initiatory knowledge, which is actually seeking to become divine, to achieve godhood. That is the explanation for transhumanism. Right? That's the explanation for where people are going in the, the post-human world, what they're trying to do. That explains everything with what's being promoted today, what we're seeing now with the technocracy, right? All of that stuff is explained in that paradigm that I'm giving you. Now, from the paradigm of science, so-called scientism, right? This kind of basic bitch view that you get out there. Nothing is actually coherently explained, ironically. I mean, you can get hyper precision with understanding, I don't know, nanotechnology or something like that. But when these disciplines that are, that are hyper precise try to step back and speak about all of life, right? Like molecular biology. Then they reach back into the ancient aeons past, which are not empirically observed. And they throw out the wildest theories that consciousness just came to be out of nothing. Magic, magic worldviews. When we think of evolutionary theory, we realize that the concepts of evolution are ancient, right? Ancient Hinduism, ancient Egyptian philosophy, ancient Greek philosophy, all had versions of atomism, of, uh, of, of things morphing into, a train, magically changing into other things, right? These, this is the reality behind the origins of these worldviews. And if you go back to the English lodges, right? Again, people, I'm not, I'm not the first person to say this, has been written on by historians. It's actually those occult lodges that gave us the idea of Darwin, Darwinism, of Darwinian theory. Now, I'm not saying that Darwin himself, but many of those others in his circle, the Huxleys, right? These people were parts of these, a part of these lodges that had this esoteric philosophy, this alchemical philosophy. And the thing about that is that it gives the appearance of wisdom, but in fact, it is absurd, right? It's, it's the same as like ancient Hinduism. It gives the appearance of wisdom. And I'm not saying there weren't intelligent ancient Hindus, but at, at base, the, the philosophy is very contradictory. 
it'll say things like nothing can come into being on its own and yet at the same time consciousness evolves into being but at the same time we don't even know what consciousness is and in fact there is no consciousness right you get these constant vacillating contradictions and dialectics all the time in these ridiculous philosophies so on the one hand we're told that humanism is the goal for example right all these enlightenment philosophers and humanists they want to exalt man right the, the humanist manifesto and yet what is man man is a meaningless product of goo of ancient coomer goo right meaningless coomer goo of the aliens the alien coomer goo is you right literally okay so that's more rational than theism supposedly by many of the panspermia theorists dawkins even it's just another mythology and this is what a lot of people have a hard time understanding is that they, they, they think that there's like this grand, grand council of science somewhere that like knows all and sees all and determines just based on the evidence. It's all mythology. Now, does that mean that individual scientists in these disciplines don't discover true things and make progress? Of course not. In fact, a lot of real science is engineers. <laughs> Absolutely. They do science all the time because they have to make, you know, the things work, right? Or the the rocket doesn't work. The engineer doesn't get his stuff right. That's real science. But speculating about what a monkey did 11 million years ago, that's not science. That's science fiction. And if you've read a lot of science fiction, you read H.G. Wells and all these guys, you start to realize how much science fiction actually influences what we think science is. And Hollywood, of course, had a, a big role in that, which I covered in my books. So anyway, so I just want to leave you with that, that the real origin of modern science, what everybody worships, what Huxley in Brave New World, through the character Mustafa Mann, says is a new religion. He says, we will give the people this is one of the top elitists from the Royal Society circles, Huxley, telling you that science will be given as a religion. Now, he's not talking about theory and observation. He's talking about scientism, a religion that's a replacement for the older religions, Bible, etc. And that people will fall for this thinking that there's this etheric Mount Olympus of guys in lab coats with beakers and bunsen burners full of bubbly blue liquids full of the scientific kumar goo to make you in a test tube but what does huxley say that brave new world is in this this grand revolution he says it's the final revolution and what is the final revolution it's the revolution against man himself to achieve the post-human trans-human future and that's, in fact, why his brother, Julian Huxley, who wrote the U UNESCO Manifesto, coined the term transhumanism to evolve beyond and to replace the human. This is Jay Dyer from Jay's Analysis. Click like below if you would share this because this is reality. This is the real. I'm the real scientist <laughs> telling you what the scientific data of actually reading the history of science tells us. If you like this analysis, be sure to click subscribe and give me a thumbs up down below. Also, be sure to check out Jay's analysis uh, and definitely click the bell down below to be sure you get the updates.